first time in about eight months to defend his WBA and WBO 130-pound titles against Juan Carlos Ramirez. Making final preparations, Asalito Freitas, who in Brazil rivaled members of the national soccer team, the 2002 World Cup champions for supreme superstardom. And he's supremely confident, big smile. How big is he in his native land? An estimated 50 million in Brazil watched the live broadcast of his fight with Joel Casamayor at 3 o'clock in the morning. His wedding was nationally televised and watched by millions. But even though Freitas has been performing on an international stage for years, the waiting and watching hasn't gotten any easier for his wife, Eliana. Fighters generally rely on an entourage to help achieve their success inside the ring. But for super featherweight champion Asselino Freitas, it's not his manager, his trainer, nor his cornerman that give him his most valued support. It's his wife, Eliana. Married two years to Brazil's most famous fighter, Eliana Freitas knows full well the dangers her husband faces every time he steps into the ring. When I sit at ringside, I'm confident Popo will do well. But I also know it's a very difficult sport, and dangers are many. Asselino Freitas' first 29 fights were relatively easy affairs, but his last three bouts have all gone the distance, and have become increasingly upsetting for his most ardent support. I know his fights are becoming more competitive, and he's facing better opposition. I know he can knock everybody out, but it's very hard for me. Even in her husband's last bout, Eliana became so distraught, she left her ringside seat and sought the sanctuary of a deserted stairwell. And she it is difficult for her to watch because she didn't grow up around boxing, and it can be hard to watch someone you love get hit for a living. It's okay if she had to get away from the ring for a little while. I have a strong faith in God, and that night I went to the stairwell and prayed Popo would have the strength to come out unharmed. It is hard to watch Popo fight, but I have to believe that he will take care of himself and that nothing bad will happen to him. Throughout his storybook eight-year career, Asselino Freitas has never lost a bout nor been seriously hurt. But as he continues to face better and perhaps bigger opposition, will his wife be able to cope with the frightening possibilities that can occur inside the ring? And the beautiful Eliana Freitas, accompanying uh, her husband, fights her own fight every time. Asselino climbs through the ropes. In all likelihood, Popo will control Ramirez more easily than Eliana will control her nerves. And Steve Albert back here with Steve Farhood. For Asselino Freitas, three straight decisions following 29 consecutive uh, knockouts. Has Popo lost his power or is it by design? In other words, has he intentionally changed from puncher to boxer. I don't think he's changed, Steve. I don't think we have to worry about uh, Asselino Freitas becoming a feather-fisted fancy Dan. He's changed his style largely because a couple of his most recent opponents, Casamayor and Ata especially, he needed to box against those guys. That was the right way to approach these guys. Against Ramirez, given his style, I think we'll see the bombs away Freitas again. And if he doesn't get rid of Ramirez, then I'll say there might be reason to question where his power has gone. All right, and just for the record, uh, Freitas did promise a knockout tonight in tribute to his father, who passed away just three months ago. Let's go behind the scenes for a look at the eager challenger, Juan Carlos Ranchero Ramirez, who hopes that his dream of becoming a world champ comes alive tonight. Like Freitas, who rose from the shanty towns of Brazil to become his country's first world champion in 24 years, Ramirez has overcome the impoverished beginning. This is one Mexican who has definitely not forgotten his roots. My hometown of Juarez is a very poor, depressed city. There is very little water, very few paved roads, and very little electricity. Poverty is very high in my hometown, and many people there are in a great deal of need. The money I make in my fights, including this one, I donate to help the poor and the children of Juarez, to get them off the streets, feed them, and get them back on their feet. Because of the success I have fighting, I can give back to my community. I have an obligation to help them any way I can. I will help Juarez get back on top and be a better place to live. 
Ramirez truly a hero in his humble colony of uh, Juarez, uh, Mexico. What about his world title experience, Steve? Can that give him any kind of an edge against a, a guy like Freitas? Well, world title experience, of course, is always wonderful. The problem for Ramirez, those two title shots he had came at lighter weights, 122 and 126. So he's moving up in weight, compounding his problem is that Freitas is not only the bigger guy, but such a hard puncher. That's the problem for Ramirez. Skill-wise also could be a, a different story for Ramirez uh, tonight. Tough to match up with a guy, an all-around fighter like uh, Ocelino Freitas, as we are set now for uh, the ring walks. First, we'll take a look at the challenger from Mexico. Ramirez, very hungry for a world title. His third try at it, but a huge underdog. Looks like he's dressed in the, in, the, in the colors of the Dallas Cowboys there. Juan Carlos Ramirez, former junior featherweight and featherweight champ of Mexico. 29 and 4, just 12 knockouts. As the crowd greets him, a lot of, uh, a lot of folks here in support of Mexican heritage. They'll get louder as he gets closer to the ring. First title fight here in Chicago in, uh, since 87, I believe, Edwin Rosario. Long time. Against uh, Juan Rosario. Knowing this guy's style as he hears it from the crowd. straight ahead style and listening to his uh, strategy of uh, taking the fight to Freitas. Could he be tailor made uh, for the Brazilian, Steve? I think he is. I really don't see why, what he has to beat Freitas with. He doesn't have the boxing skills. He's not as hard a puncher. He's a little bit taller with a longer reach, but he doesn't use that kind of style. So I do think he's made for Freitas. And uh, we're just not sure if it'll factor in, but he, he has faced better opposition than Freitas. Several champions and former champions. Freitas has fought only one world champion, Joel Casamayor. <laughs> the humble, gracious Ocelino Freitas, who hasn't lost in over eight years, going back to the amateurs, won his first 29 by knockout 22 in the first three rounds. They've got the two belts. Is Oscar Suarez, his trainer of three fights. It's interesting. He, he's never seen the Freitas uh, score a knockout. For a guy known as a knockout puncher. And you hear the crowd reaction. This is probably very rare for Freitas. He's not used to coming into food. Beliana to his right. She's pretty much everywhere he goes. They were together in the fighter meetings, holding hands. A loving couple. Married recently. Chicago. Ramirez with a large 
following here. But I gotta say, anything short of a Freitas knockout would be surprising, even puzzling to me. What do you think? Well, Steve couldn't hear me. It is loud in here right now. Yeah, it is very loud. We'll just let it play out. All right, we're set to size them up as we check out the tail of the tape. Freitas now 27, two years older than Ramirez. Slight one and a half inch height advantage for Ranchero. The reach nearly identical. And at yesterday's weigh-in, both checked in at 130. The contract weight and the notable unified rules for this world title fight. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the belt in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, it's a no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecard. So here at the UIC Pavilion in Chicago, getting ready for our main event, Ocelino Freitas and Juan Carlos Ramirez for the WBA and WBO 130-pound championship. We are set for the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you. And welcome to the beautiful windy city of Chicago, Illinois, for our World Championship featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Arthur Palulo's Banner Promotions and Bobby Hits Boxing, along with BetSBG.com, the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBA, the President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor York Van Nick. Nixon, the WBO President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor is John Duggan, and the Illinois Department of Professional Regulation Boxing Board, the Director is Robert Houston, Deputy Director John Coughlin, the Chief is Sean Curtin, and our Chief Ringside Physician, Dr. Glenn Bynum. Our timekeeper, Zappa Bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, we have Dave Morrow and Gerald Scott. Presenting to you at this time are three judges scoring the bout from ringside from Chicago, Bill Lurch. From West Palm Beach, Florida, Michael Pernick. From Panama City, Panama, Medardo Villalobos. And our third man of the ring, the referee in charge. Working in this, his 54th world title bout, Gino Rodriguez. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA and WBO 130-pound championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Chicago, it's showtime! Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing navy blue trunks with silver trim, and hailing from Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. He weighed in at the limit of 130 pounds even, with a record of 29 wins, 4 losses. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the former WBO Intercontinental Champion, now ranked number 12 by the WBO, number 14 by the WBA, introducing the challenger Juan Carlos El Ranchero Ramirez. opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with light blue trim, proudly representing Salvador Brazil. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 130 pounds even, with a record of 32 wins and no losses. He has 29 big wins coming 
by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the explosive and undefeated WBA and WBO 130 pound champion of the world, introducing Asalino Popo. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of action scheduled. Our referee in charge, now the instruction, Gino Rodriguez. Ok, primeramente otra vez, lo vuelvo a repetir, que obedezcan mis instrucciones todo el tiempo, que se protejan todo el tiempo, ok? Popó, aquí está bien. Trachero, aquí también está bien. Ok? Aquí buen, buen, buen golpe, aquí buen golpe, ok? Oh, este, buena suerte a los dos ambos. Buenas noches. A very vocal, spirited crowd cheering Ramirez on, booing Freitas. Ramirez not as accustomed to this weight as Freitas is. Ranchero coming up to 130, and Evo Freitas hasn't scored a knockout in his last three fights. His punches may be a lot harder than Ramirez is normally used to. Okay, guys. Oh. Scheduled for 12 for the WBA WBO 130-pound championship. Asolito Freitas usually forces the fight from the start. Showing punishing power prior to his last three fights. 12 of his 29 knockouts in the first round. Says he fights for glory, for the people, not for money. But the very proud Juan Carlos Ramirez, gutsy, determined, durable. He's won six straight, including three against former world champions. But we'll soon find out if he's in Freitas' league. Ramirez, an action fighter, aggressive, volume puncher. Ramirez, Steve Ramirez giving ground right away. You can't see how that's a good idea. He doesn't have the boxing skills to outbox Freitas. Freitas showed his uh, boxing skills against Joel Casamayor. Freitas to the body. Freitas starting a little slower than usual. I, I hope Ramirez is studying Freitas and he doesn't plan to fight the whole fight this way. Or else, if you think you heard booing before, Ramirez has to be careful not to jump in. Oh, when he jumps in, that'll be great. A big counter-punching opportunity. Ramirez has to get close to the punch. The chant is for Mexico. Got 4,000 on hand, many of them uh, Mexican. the pace on the attack. Ranchero comes right back. The difference is Ramirez is missing. Paredes is it. Final seconds of the opening round. A very quiet one for the challenger. Keys to victory, Chief Farhood. For Asalino Freitas, keep his punches short. Ramirez should be coming forward. There's no need to reach. Stay in the pocket. Ramirez can't back Freitas up, he can't beat him. And start fast, we see he did. Freitas usually does, and Ramirez is usually a slow starter. 
Juan Carlos Ramirez punch early and often. He's not a big hitter. His only chance is to volume punch. Crowd Freitas. In front of warfare, Freitas is foot speed in the gate and extend the fight. Ramirez is used to going long. He hopes to go long in this one. Getting ready for round two of the WBA WBO 130 pound championship. Our main event here from Chicago, Illinois, the UIC Pavilion to the site of the first world championship fight in the Windy City in over 15 years. Ramirez is the hardest puncher he ever faced was Jesus Salud. They went 10 last year, resulting in the unanimous decision for uh, Ramirez. We'll see if that opinion changes tonight after facing Asselino Freitas. I mean, he wasn't just knocking people out earlier in his career. He was devastating, blasting them out, but they were lesser opponents, no question about it. Then came Alfred Cote, Joel Casamayor, and uh, Daniel Atta. Oh, Ranchero trying to end it on one pick punch. Up, 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 but that was a win. No doubt the quality of opposition has picked up for Freitas. Well, it picked up big time when he fought Casamayor, obviously by far the best fighter he's fought. And as you pointed out, he had to adapt more to awkward, elusive styles, so perhaps more boxing as a result. But Ramirez just plainly feels that Freitas' power has uh, eroded at the tender age of 27. He has had a history of hand problems, Freitas, which he re-injured in the Casamayor fight. Ramirez to the left hook upstairs. Missing with the uppercut. Ramirez is punching this round unlike the first round. As a result, there should be more opportunities for Freitas. And Freitas an excellent counter puncher. One of the best. There's a right hand over the top. Right on the head by Arcelino Freitas. Remember, Ramirez has been down at least six times. Four against Aaron Morales. Now he's got Freitas on the rope. Freitas spins him around and fires away. to those right hands that Freitas didn't finish Ramirez. And here's what was ruled a knockdown by the referee, Gino Hernandez. That left took cuffed Freitas around the head. If you want to say that cost a knockdown because there was a punch, you could, but clearly Freitas slipped. I don't think there's any question, but it is ruled a knockdown by the referee, Gennaro Rodriguez. Ramirez dropped the one knee 
to his right knee earlier in the round. That should have been a knockdown. That was a makeup knockdown. Greatest pounding away. That's not going to be ruled a knockdown. Well, that looked like a knockdown. Flip the point. Greatest sticking to the body. Upstairs with an uppercut. Firing bombs. Now what's holding Ramirez up? Losing count of the knockdowns. some question. 
question of applause regarding the various knockdowns of both fighters in this fight. That was a good stoppage. The amount of punishment Ramirez took in the third made the quick stoppage in the fourth appropriate. For a while, we didn't even have a referee to begin that fourth round because Gennaro Rodriguez was trying to get the, the handlers of Ramirez to get out of They were still in the ring. It's unbelievable. And then at the end of the previous round, Oscar Suarez, the trainer, comes running over to the referee Rodriguez admonishing him I've never he just ran right across the ring and I think he wanted the fight yeah he wanted to fight he couldn't understand why the fight hadn't been stopped and he wasn't doing it to get an edge he knew his fighter was in total control right I mean he didn't want to see Ramirez get further uh, hurt wow what a what a wild scene here in Chicago 19 seconds in the round four Freitas, uh, no doubt, offering some words, some encouragement, inspiration to Ramirez in defeat. Ramirez showing a lot of guts for the short duration of this fight. That's been his career in all his title fights. He's gotten knocked down, he's gotten back up, but he has not been a threat to win. His defense wasn't going to do it against Freitas. Pick up some of the action here towards the end of the fight. As you see the uh, Brazilian fans celebrate. This is the beginning of round four. You can Hello, let's go. Bora, bora, bora. Let's go. Back. Bora, 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 bora. Let's go. Let's go. Bora, bora, bora. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 19 seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Gino Rodriguez, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and still champion, Acelino Popo Freitas. What has become a ritual with uh, Acelino Freitas, he talks to somebody on the cell phone back to Brazil. We've seen that time and time again. Hey, hey, Oscar. Yes, sir. If I say for real, let's go up to Jim Gray. Jim. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you. Oscar Suarez, his trainer, will translate for us. You just spoke to your mother. We know that you've dedicated this to your father. What exactly did your mom have to say to you? We just saw you on the telephone. No sé, você acabó de hablar con su mamá, que precisamente fue lo que usted habló con ella. Sí, mi mamá fue el aniversario 12 de esta semana. Y es un placer estar con mi papá y para mi mamá fue el aniversario. My mom, to my mom birthday, and, and he dedicated this fight to his dad, so he, he's got a double header for them, you know. He dedicated both fights for his mom birthday and his I just passed away. Your father's one of his final requests was a knockout tonight, and he was very interested in your boxing career. How much did you feel that and feel him with you tonight? Su papá siempre pedía a usted un knockout, papá, un knockout, papá. ¿Qué tal usted se siente hoy con presión de su papá y con un knockout? Realizado. Mi papá siempre pedía un knockout en tercero, cuarto round. Y no pasó de cuarto. Estoy muy realizado con mi hijo. His dad always asked him for a knockout by the third or fourth round, and he completed, he, he accomplished it today. So that was a straight for him. Popo, what will you do now? Both Barrera and Morales are below you in weight class. Those would be big fights. Or you could move up to Floyd Mayweather uh, Jr. Uh, up. That would be a big fight. What would be your plans now, or would you like to unify the title? Sorry, we can't take any more phone calls right now. Yo, yo, listening. Um, você, você sabe que, que Barrera y Morales ahora están en un peso más bajo que você. Pero si a você le interesaría, siendo una luta importante, quizá millonaria para você, si a você le interesaría una de esas lutas contra uno de ellos. Oscar, na verdade. Agora eu quero curtir minha vitória e pensar nesses muchachos que é um pouco de promoção a essa hora. Eu tenho que promover a nossa equipe, promover o meu talento e para a gente ser cada vez mais campeão. Right now I want to enjoy my victory. I want to enjoy with my group. Uh, you know, I want to celebrate this and then later on worry about those guys. You know, right now.
to celebrate, you know, and go and, and celebrate with his group as a family. But ...may be precluded then because of that answer, but he would, would he be interested in unifying... He would like to unify all four of them. Take a look right here, if we can, and bring the referee in. Here we are, as we take a look right here. The point that you stopped the fight, that he could not continue? Yes. Anyway, as a matter of fact, I, I was very close to stopping the fight in the previous round, but I... You know, and I know American fighters are tough fighters. So you got, I just got some fight. I let him fight. Juan Carlos indicate to you that he wanted to continue? Okay, thank you very much. It was not a knockdown, so we don't need to review that. Eliana, we saw you tonight before the fight. How difficult was it for you to watch Popo again this evening? I'm sorry? How difficult was it for Eliana, who we saw a feature on before the fight? How difficult was it for her once again to watch Popo perform? How difficult was it for you this night, if this night was different or like the other times before? I couldn't do it, I was very nervous, I was very nervous, I was very nervous, I was very nervous, but I couldn't do it directly. She was, again, you know, she was, she was a little nervous, you know, she was a little out of distance, but she was there, like she, as she said before, you know, praying, but, but she couldn't look. She couldn't look, just say she was still a little nervous. Hopo, finally, in English, por favor. Uh, anything to the fans here in America? Uh, congratulations. A short time. Thank you, America. Thank you, Brazil. Is uh, 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 America, come on, example. All, all, the Brazilian, all the Brazilians that, 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 that live in America, he wants to congratulate them too. These victories for them. I love it. Hablo inglés. Poquito, getting much better. Congratulations. Eu hablo más portugués. Eu sei portugués. Congratulations, Popo. We look forward to your next fight. Steve, back to you. All right, Jim, thanks very much. And I think uh, Jim's Portuguese is improving <laughs> as well. All right, so um, some questionable knockdowns. No question about that. Uh, but it was academic, and uh, uh, Selena Freitas uh, bringing home a big point here tonight, I think, in a statement. No doubt. Turns out Suarez rushed the referee to complain about that knockdown, but as he said, it was a moot point. And I'll tell you this, the hard punching, exploding as Selena Freitas is a hell of a lot more interesting and fun to watch no than question. the boxer. And uh, let's go back and, and take a look at uh, those knockdowns. We'll pick it up, uh, Steve, in round number three. There were a, a bevy of knockdowns in this fight. Here's the beginning. That is the Asselino Freitas we remember yep. in the past, landing that right hand. That was the beginning of the end. There were only so many right hands like that Ramirez could take, and one on the point of the chin. Here it is again. Watch how it comes around from the side a little bit, not a pure straight punch. Full leverage. He dipped down on his legs, got full power. Yes, Asselino Freitas can still punch. All right, let's see. That was round three, then around four. This is what happened. This was in the very beginning of the round while the referee was distracted in Ramirez's corner. You see Ramirez voluntarily backing to the ropes. And how could anybody question? There's no way you could question this stoppage. His head is snapping back from those punches. He's on his way down when the referee... Actually, he is down when the referee stops the fight. So no problem with that. And it had to happen. This guy really was tailor-made because he was there to be hit for a freight. And you're right. I... I certainly realize now what Oscar Suarez was complaining about because that, that wasn't a knockdown against his fighter, but check this out. The barrage by Freitas. Oh. Every punch, left to straight right, right uppercuts. And there would have been more if the referee, if the referee allowed it. And then the exaltation of the Brazilian Oscelino Freitas. And then uh, the tears, the emotion as he dedicates this fight to his dad who passed away just three months ago. And he got his big knockout. So what's next? He told us he wants to unify. I, I'm just not sure what he's really thinking because he told us there's no sense to fight Joel Casamayor again since he's already beaten. He doesn't want to fight uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. because for some reason he thinks he's not as important now since he moved up to 135. What, what do you think he... I think he should fight one of those guys if he wants more recognition. We're used to American champions screaming out names, calling fighters out. Freitas is different. I get him on trash talk in Brazil. But he doesn't seem, he's very hesitant to name his opponents. That's no way to sell a big fight. Maybe he's happy 
you know, taking on whoever uh, his promoters make him fight. He's getting paid well. He makes a lot of money in Brazil in uh, endorsements. He doesn't see that anger for this next super fight after Casamayor. So, uh, you think he needs a bit of more of a mean streak? Well, he needs to call somebody out and learn a little bit about the business side of boxing. There are plenty of opponents uh, for him to fight. And let's check it out. <laughs> yeah, these are the guys I'd like to see him fight. Three of them are featherweights. I don't know if they come up to fight Freitas, but Barrera or Morales against Freitas would be tremendous. Casamayor, hey, that was a great fight and a very close fight. Freitas doesn't seem to want Casamayor again, but Casamayor is number one in the WBO. That's one of the titles Freitas holds. And Mayweather, I feel that would be the fight that would elevate Freitas from a number nine or ten pound for pound fighter into the top five. Again, though, I'd like to see Freitas more hungry for that fight. Yeah, but for, he just says he uh, he's not interested in Mayweather. Well, guess what? He's back on the phone again talking to uh, perhaps his mom or other members of his family in uh, in Brazil. I think also a thing that's uh, significant for Oscar Freitas, if he's looking to gain more uh, notice and recognition, particularly in the United States, he's got to fight more frequently. I mean, he only fought, uh, eight, he fought eight months ago against Angela Ta in Phoenix. And uh, it's just not enough. He's got to get in there more uh, often, don't you think? Well, if he performs like this, now he can't do this against every opponent, obviously, but if he performs like this frequently, then the recognition is going to go way up and the possibility of a super fight with a Mayweather or a Barrera or Morales will be more realistic. All right, well, it was a short night uh, overall, but let's take a look at the scores.